Mary, are you working uh, in your lab? Uh, are you working at full capacity in, in, in the labs out there now? We are certainly ramping up our capacity, uh, Katie. Um, I think it's fair to note that last June and July, the, the laboratories were managing to produce results at about 8,000 per day. And since that time, uh, we're now up at multiples of that. Uh, so in the last uh, reports we have this week, where some uh, some days where we had 19,000 tests uh, re- produced. Um, over the summer months, we looked at capacity in laboratories, both for equipment and for staffing. Uh, the equipment was rather easier to manage. Uh, so the HSC... Um, their procurement group, along with the National Pathology Network, has identified the equipment required for each of the 46 testing laboratories and has put a process in place to get those in. And so indeed, in my own laboratory, our equipment was delivered last week and we're now in the process of verifying that it works for us. Um, As part of that, they also identified that to do the testing, we need staff. Uh, And they've identified that there are 64 additional posts needed in our clinical laboratories to provide the testing at the level that we need to, which is over 100,000 tests per week. Uh, Unfortunately, those staff are just not out there. And a lot of what Dr. Anna Kelly was saying resonated very well with me and, and the profession of medical scientists. At the moment, we there are we have recruitment issues, we have retention issues, uh, and some of those recruitment and retention issues are related to the parity of esteem and pay of the medical scientists in comparison with other scientists in the clinical laboratories, and also with their career pathway. We too feel we should be able to work to the limit of our license. Um, so we're. It's a situation now where we have we need to bring into the laboratories as a matter of urgency an additional sixty four staff. And when you say they're not out there, do you say that they physically we don't have sixty four spare medical scientists in the country? Correct, we don't. Um, we produce about ninety medical scientists per year uh, from three accredited co- uh, courses, both uh, that, that would be uh, TU Dublin, CIT in Cork and GMIT in Galway. And at this point, I would say there is hardly a, a graduate from uh, 2020 who is not now in full employment. Um, the, the 64 people just are not out there. We are, many labs are operating using agency staff from other countries. Uh, a lot of agency staff come from the UK. That's going to be an additional problem when we, we're going to face when Brexit comes in at the end of the year, where these people will not be able to work in this country unless they register to work in this country. So what, what they're looking to do is bring in a programme where we take in graduates who have similar qualifications, so in other biological sciences, and hopefully put a programme together where these scientists can be trained, uh, brought into the workforce, trained and educated to become medical scientists on a kind of earn and learn basis, so that we get hands and bodies on the ground straight away. And at the end of a, of a period, these people will be eligible to register with the it, regulator. It does seem, though, a bit of a patch, uh, a, a patchwork uh, approach in the middle of a pandemic, given how crucial we well, know that, that lab capacity is to us at this moment in time. It, it is. It, it is. I suppose people in, in laboratories are, are solutions driven. So this is a solution that has... has uh, been come to, all the details are, are not worked out, but it is, we need people, we need them now. We, at the same time, are looking to increase the intake into the colleges. There's also a plan to have a postgraduate entry programme starting in February, but those take time. Okay. And we don't have the time now. Yeah, is that David? Yeah, just a very quick point. I have the figures from the Beyond Call for Ireland response, and these are of the 70,000 people who responded to that. It was whittled down to about 3,000 who were deemed to be 
uh, frontline and were uh, candidates that were suitable to be employed. Of that, there was 27 medical scientists. Only three were employed. Uh, nine have dropped out since and 14 still have not been offered contracts. So why have those 14 people not been offered contracts? And the same then if you look at medical laboratory aids, 64 have not been offered contracts. So at a time when we know we need this additional staff, it is just staggering that we have 14 medical scientists in the pool waiting to be uh, uh, offered a job Eight of them are, are deemed to be job ready, and yet they they have been in this pool since June of this year and have not been offered contracts. I, I think you need to realise, David, that to be, to be employed as a medical scientist, if you have not been working uh, for two of the previous five years on the day the register for medical scientists is open, you have to register with Coru before you can be employed as a medical scientist. I am not aware of who the medical scientists who are on the uh, the call for Ireland, uh, who they are or what their qualifications actually are. That process was being run through a recruitment agency. Um, but I do know that the Academy of Clinical Science and Laboratory Medicine had a parallel list of people who were prepared to help, many of whom were scientists who ha- were in retirement, who were coming back in to work to help out in the short term without okay. any intention of, of providing a service uh, into the future. And okay. just very quickly, Katie, if I can say that eight of those are deemed to be job ready. And I would assume that if they are deemed to be job ready, haven't come through clearance, haven't come through the candidate interview process, that they would be qualified to work, but they simply haven't been given the contracts. OK. OK. And I just want to ask you, just before uh, we move on, um, Mari, the Medical Laboratory Science Association, that's your professional body, the, um, th- they have voted last weekend uh, to take up industrial action. Yes, the, the MLSA is the, the union representing the medical scientists who work in clinical laboratories, uh, as distinct from the academy, which is the, the professional body. Uh, but we're two sister organisations. And yes, the MLSA voted overwhelmingly uh, to give the, their executive a mandate to move forward on seeking parity with other scientists in laboratory medicine. Uh, medical scientists do a qualification that takes four years, which is specifically designed to have them working in clinical laboratories. They do a clinical laboratory placement as part of that. They are educated and trained to work in okay. all the laboratories and they also do a research project that is okay. I, 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 laboratory that's a, focused. But, but I, the, no, I appreciate yeah. you, just, you, you feel that there is a, a parity issue there and a pay issue, obviously. How, how again, as I asked uh, Dr Kelly, uh, how seriously should we, how much concerned, how concerned, I should say, should we be I think we about should the be. fact that this... Uh, uh, mandate is now there for th- for a strike action. I think we should be very concerned. Um, this way back in in two thousand and two, there was an agree. Uh, uh, there were expert groups which said that there should be parity, uh, and the parity was there for a short period until benchmarking, which split it again. The MLSA has been promised since then that there would be that the parity could would, and would be restored in various ways. It has not. And then more recently, uh, another group of colleagues who are the laboratory assistants who report to the medical scientists had in a job evaluation. That job evaluation oh. then put them on a salary that is greater than the medical scientist to whom they report. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure this will, this will be uh, come back again, Mary, but I'm going to have to take a break then.